run into the new uh, sort of vocabulary grammar items that we're going to go through this week, I always like to start off with a little bit of revision from the previous week. Just means that everybody's at least on a similar starting page. And, you know, if you have any questions about something that we did last week, it's a time for you to ask those questions. So, um, basically what we'll do is we will run through some of the greetings, how to ask how you are, a couple of manners, um, hello, goodbye, and uh, just some uh, like little introductory things like how to say your name. All right. Let's see. Does anybody remember how we could say good day or good morning in French? Bonjour. Bonjour. Exactly. So it both means um, hello, good day, good morning. Okay. It's the most common way that we say all that. Does anybody remember afternoon or good afternoon? Bon après-midi. Yes. Bon après. Hang on. Okay. Bon après-midi. All right. We have also have good evening. Does anybody remember that one? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Exactly. Okay. So these are all ways to greet people. Okay, some of them are also ways to say goodbye. So bonsoir is also a way to say goodbye to somebody in the evening. But it's also a way to say hello when you see them as well. Um, does anybody remember the formal way that we say, how are you? Uh, comment ça va? Comment? So yes, comment is correct. But is it ça va or is it ça va? Comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? That's right. Comment allez-vous? Okay, so this word, this phrase is made up of comment, okay? The comment, which means how, okay? Then you have the verb aller, which means to go, okay? And the last one, which is vous, which is a pronoun. It's the formal way in which we say you, okay? So how going you, how are you going, or comment allez-vous, all right? So, and Jessica, I think you said the informal one before. Uh, yeah, comment ça va? Comment ça va? Okay. Or you can simply do um, ça va. Okay. It's also very, very common to just hear someone say ça va, ça va. It's both the question and the response. So that's a bit of fun too. So comment ça va? Okay. Um, any questions so far there, guys? No? Okay. Scroll on. Yeah, we'll have to move these on the way as well. So now we come to Kelly Razor. Now we come down to manners. Okay, please and thank you. And like with how are you, please has two ways in which it can be said. It can be said formally or to people that you are not familiar with. Um, it's a more polite way. And then you have an informal way of saying the same phrase. Does anyone want to try to have a go with the formal one? S'il vous plaît. Exactly. So, s'il vous plaît. Okay. It has a little accent on the eye, but I don't have that in mind. So this is s'il vous plaît, which literally translates to if you please, okay? But it's basically the equivalent of um, please in English, okay? And as you can see again, we've got the formal version, vous, for this one, okay? Does anybody remember what the um, 
the informal version of you was from last week? Two. That's right. So you have two, which is also you. Okay, but it's informal. So does anybody want to have a go at putting together the informal version of please? Sit to play. Very good. So sit to play. So you would probably use the first one, okay, s'il vous plaît, if you were speaking to a colleague, to your teacher, to um, a person at the shop, like a, you know, the um, cash register person. Um, basically anybody you don't have a very strong or just have a social sort of connection with. Uh, sit to play is for your friends, it's for your family, it's for people that you have more familiarity with. Okay. So you've also got thank you. Okay, so please and thank you. Um, does anybody know thank you? Just regular thank you? Merci. Merci. That's right. And it's spelt like this. Not with that one, but that one. Okay. Merci. <clears throat> so does anybody know how we could turn that into thank you very much? Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Okay. So this is merci beaucoup. All right. So thank you very much. Um, it's generally okay to say merci in most circumstances. Merci beaucoup is for, you know, very big favors or to be super, super polite when you thank somebody. It's usually a big deal that you're using merci beaucoup. Um, but again, if you're using it and it's not a big deal, it's not a problem because, you know, politeness is never wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, and so we're going to wrap that little section up with just different ways to say goodbye. Did anybody remember the most common one or the most formal goodbye? Au revoir. Au revoir. That's right. Okay, au revoir. And this is tends to be a quite um, never going to see you again kind of one, or at least for a long time. Does anybody remember how to say good evening? Bonsoir. Bonsoir, that's right. From earlier. Okay, bonsoir. And then good night. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Excellent, guys. Yeah, bonne nuit. All right. And did anybody remember our sort of little see you laters or see you soon? Um, a bientôt. That's right. So, a bientôt. Okay. Do you remember which one that was? See you soon. See you soon. That's right. So, it might be tomorrow. It might be within the week, a couple of days. Okay. And does anybody remember the other one? Um, is it a plus tard? A what? A plus tard. Ah, a plus tard. That's correct. So that means um, until later. Okay, a plus tard. Okay, that's another way. So basically, see you later. Okay. And there's another one that I use a little bit. So a tout à l'heure. Okay, which is like very soon I will see you. So see you later, see you very soon. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far on any, on any of that guys? No? no? Cool. So we're going to move on, just do a brief recap of the pronouns, okay, from 
last week. We sort of went over them quite quickly. So I thought I might just give you guys a little memory boost because um, they can be a little bit confusing. And this is a good one for just introducing yourself. Okay. So the verb we're using is sapere. Okay. So to call yourself or to call itself. All right. And so over here on the, what is it, the left-hand side where it says English, we're going to put the English pronoun next to it, okay? And then we're going to conjugate sapere on the other side, okay, with the French uh, pronoun. So does anybody remember je? I am. So I, that's right, yeah. And two. You? You, that's right. Formal or informal? Informal. Okay. What about il, mm. elle, and on? Uh, his, hers, and they. So not his, her, or they, but it's he, All right. she, and we. Last one, anyone? We. We, that's right. Okay. Then you have nu. Anyone remember nu? We. Oui. We. Oui. And is that we formal or informal? It's formal. It's formal. Okay. So on and we. So on and new are both we, but the new is formal. Okay. <clears throat> and you've got vu. Formal you. The formal you. Very good. The last ones, il, el. They. They, very good. And they are, what's the difference between il and el? Uh, masculine and feminine. Masculine and feminine. So when you have a group of men or a group of women, they have a different pronoun. But also if you have a mixed group, men and women, they use the masculine, il. Okay. Any questions on any of those so far, guys? No? No, all good. All good. All right. We're just going to put the right verb, like we're going to conjugate this verb, s'appeler, okay, into the present tense. Okay, so just, you know, English, okay, for like the, sorry, the first one, je. How do we do that one? Je suis. Not shui. Sui. Je suis. Je m'appelle. Yeah, who said that one? I missed that. <laughs> so je m'appelle. Oh, that was me. I was wrong. Okay. Okay, so je m'appelle blah blah blah. Je m'appelle Taylor. Okay. Then you have two. Okay. How do you think we conjugate this one? Tu te pelles. Yes, very good, Lara. Okay. Usually we use that for like, um, qu'est-ce que tu te pelles? What are you called? Qu'est-ce que tu te pelles? All right, when we're asking the question to somebody. Uh, what about il, elle, and on? Il s'appelle. S'appelle. Il s'appelle. Very good. Il s'appelle. Elle s'appelle. 
on s'appel, okay? All of them have the same conjugated form with s apostrophe, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have nu. Sorry? Nous The nous s'appelons. That's right. Nous s'appelons. Right. The termination is a little different. So the ending is a bit different because it has the pronoun nous in front of it. Okay. Uh, I should also add the S over here for the little two. Usually it ends in an S. Tu t'appelles. Okay, with an S on the end. Uh, vous? Vous s'appelez? Vous s'appelez. Very good. Okay. okay, with an EZ. Okay. And the last one? Ils, elles. Okay, il s'appelle, elle s'appelle. Okay. All right, these are the main types of conjugation. Okay, the endings. So you have uh, usually je is either the same as tu or it's the same as he, she, and we. Okay, the ending for the verb. Um, Two always ends, well, always, for regular verbs, ends with ES, okay? Tu t'appelles, with the S. You have s'appelle, which is the standard, generally, for il, elle, on, okay? Then you have nous s'appelons, the ONS goes with nu for regular verbs. Irregular ones might change, but... Most of them end this way. You have vous s'appelez, okay, ending with the EZ, and il, elle s'appelle, okay, with the E and T on the end. Any questions about any of those? Okay. Mm -mm. Cool. The most common one you end up using is je m'appelle, okay, je m'appelle Taylor, my name is etc, etc. But you t might ask people, comment vous s'appelez? Or comment tu t'appelles? When you ask them a question. Okay, what are you called? What is your name? All right. Cool, cool, cool. If anybody wants to write these down, does anybody need any time? <coughs> yeah, probably one minute. No problem. Yep, all good. All good? Mm-hmm. All right. If everyone's good, we'll move on. But please don't hesitate to ask any questions about this as we go forward. It will become easier to remember them, I promise. It just takes memorising the pronouns and how they work with verbs. Mm -hmm. So now we've got a little revision out of the way. We're going to move on to our main topic for today, which is um, ordering at a restaurant, which is commander, okay, to command or to order something. Also going to be looking at other verbs like réserver, okay, to reserve, okay, um, manger, which is, you know, eating, and boire, which is drinking or to drink, I should say. Um, but for starters, we'll just go through vocabulary, verbs, tenses, etc., and then we'll get into a bit of practice, hopefully, towards the end. All right. So, as you can see, we've got places, 
where you're most likely to go when you visit France. It's got a, quite a large culinary uh, culture and they enjoy eating out at all different kinds of places. Um, but they're not all called restaurants, okay? There's different sort of categories of eating establishments. Some you might recognize and some you might not. So you have le café, okay, which was where we get the same word from. So a café, all right? I've just put, forgotten to put the um, accent on the E there at the end of café. So you'll see that. And that's generally where you go to have coffee, tea, maybe a pastry, maybe. But generally it is just, you know, you go in, order coffee, have that, and then go again. Um, there's very few places in France that do takeaway coffee. Um, it's mostly a we're going to sit down and have coffee kind of culture. Um, unless you're super, super busy in the morning getting to work um, and you didn't have one before you left home, it's very rare that you'll see a person walk in and order a cafe to take away, or coffee to take away, I should say. Then you have la creperie. Okay, does anybody have an idea what this might be? <coughs> or you eat crepes? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so um, does everybody know what a crepe is? La crepe? Is it like a pancake? It's very <laughs> similar to a pancake, but flatter. It's very, very thin. Mm -hmm. And it usually gets folded onto itself with uh, toppings and things inside of it. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice, particularly with like you know, melted chocolate and fruit, or you can go to the savory end and have it with eggs and bacon and all kinds of things. So yeah, uh, la creperie, it's where you eat crepes, generally. Sometimes uh, waffles might also be sold at a creperie, but um, mostly the crepes, very nice. Um, then you have uh, le bistro. Okay, le bistro is um, basically your standard small restaurant, okay? Um, it's not a fast food place? It kind of can be, like you can take food away, okay? Um, it's not so strict like a restaurant. So le restaurant is very much a place where you go, you sit down, and you usually will have like a set menu, okay, if you go to a restaurant. Um, a bistro is much more casual. It's much more like if you want to sit down and eat, you can, but also if you want to take things away, you can also take it away. Um, much more common to go to a bistro than a restaurant, if, particularly if you're a student. Uh, la brasserie, okay. Similar to a bistro, okay, but um, usually the brasserie will have alcohol. I mean, bistro will as well, but it's usually a bit of a combination with a bar and a restaurant. So, um, yeah, when I studied in Strasbourg, and most of them were called brasserie because it's a big sort of uh, beer culture there. So you have beers and restaurants in the same places. Well, brasserie. Then, of course, I've, as I've mentioned, le restaurant is usually quite a chic, fancy establishment. Uh, thinking like those beautiful five-star hotels in Paris, like the Ritz, their restaurant is what they would consider to be an actual restaurant. Um, as you'll see when we go down to menus, uh, usually when you go to a restaurant, uh, the menu is fixed. You get what is being served that night by the chef. And it's usually anywhere between a three to a five course meal, depending on if they're doing soups or not. Uh, then you have le bar, which most French people adopted from English. Okay, le bar or bar de vin. Okay, a wine bar. Um, and both of them function as you imagine they would. They're usually drinking establishments for the adult population. <laughs> um, and yeah, any questions about any of those so far? Oh, cool. 
So we'll move on to verbs. There's only a couple. Um, did anybody remember? Does anybody remember what réserver might mean? Reserve. Yes. Yeah, so to reserve. Okay. So in English, when we write what we call the infinitive version, okay, um, we say to reserve. Okay. But in French, they say réserver. Okay, so same thing, just slightly different. Then you have vouloir. Okay, anybody have an idea what vouloir might be? A volcano? No, it's a verb, so an action word, but it means to want, to want something or just to want. Okay. Right. Manger. Eat to eat, yes. Uh, bois drink. to drink, yes. And the last one, préféré. So to prefer, okay, we. We in English took this word, préféré, to say to prefer something or to favour something or to like something. Okay. Um, and that might be if, you know, the waiter asks, would you like to sit outside or inside? You might say, uh, oui, je préfère l'intérieur, okay, the inside. Or non, je préfère l'extérieur, the outside. Okay, that's how you would... You would use that one okay doesn't come up all the time depending on how much time we have we might not go into it but the first four réserver vouloir manger and boire are very important to eating and you know what we're going to be talking about any questions so far no okay everybody copied that down yes <clears throat> All right, I will move us forward. <clears throat> so, le temps, okay? In French, when we talk about time, okay, the clock, there's 12 numbers, but they talk about 24-hour time, okay? So, after 12 o'clock midday, you keep going... 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, up until 24 heures. Okay? So they will say, excuse me. So X, Y, Z number, okay? R. Okay? R means hours. Okay? How many hours is it? Okay. Heure. Okay. Okay. So, might run through quickly, just the numbers up to 24. Okay. Some of you may have heard them, some of you may not have, but I'll just run through them and they're there on the worksheet if you want to practice them in your own time. Uh, if you do want to go over these in another lesson, we can definitely do that but um, if you'd like to practice them, okay? Because this will come into things like age as well. So just let me know. So basically zero to 10, you have zero, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. Okay, I'll repeat. Zero, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. All right. The hardest ones are things like trois, uh, quatre. Okay, people seem caught up on that one. Easy one for that one to me is like to think of a cat, okay, and put a little R on the end of it, quatre, 
All right. Um, sank as well. So the boat sank is number five. Um, all the others are pretty good, I think. Um, just remembering with wheat, it's not wheat. They don't really pronounce H in French very often. So it ends up being wheat, like a W sound. So moving on to 11 to 20. Okay. <clears throat> so 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. I'll repeat. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, generally, the hard ones are that sort of 14, 15, and 16. So, 14, 15, 16. So, 15, 16. For Australians, just think of cans up in Queensland. Um, for others, again, try to think of cans or maybe, I don't know, aluminium cans. <laughs> same, same sound, really. Uh, just different spelling. Um, and then you have says, okay, like he says, she says, almost. Uh, so yeah, onze, douze, treize. Treize is really hard because it's that TR sound again. So treize, quatorze, quinze, seize, dix-sept, dix-huit, dix-neuf, vingt. Okay. Then the last four. Uh, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so after 20, it becomes very standard. You just keep repeating the tens number, like 20, 30, so 20 and 30, 40, so on, uh, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. A bit like how we do, very much similar to how we do in English. So 21, 22, 23, same pattern up until you hit 70. And then there's a slightly different way that they do numbers, but we'll do that later. <laughs> any questions about any of those numbers? How do we improve our pronunciation in the numbers? Like how do we get used to it? So there's like the way I did it was that I, <laughs> I listen to like um, YouTube videos with like, it's almost like children's programs on YouTube, but you type in numbers in French videos mm -hmm. and it, and you can try to speak along with them okay. as they're counting. And you'll hear if you're matching it or if you're not. And it might seem like, oh gosh, I'm watching a children's program but it's a really good way to learn it because yeah. that's how you learn your first language as a child as well. Yeah. And it's, you've got kind of a practice in that, yeah. just listening to people and repeating. So I found that to be a good way to learn it. Other ones were like things like the alphabet, doing the same thing for the French alphabet. I also thought that was a good one because mm -hmm. again, the letters do sl sound slightly different, particularly the vowel sounds. Yeah. So similar to that you can go onto youtube and you can type in the alphabet in french and you can listen to that and start following it and start repeating it and over time it'll become a little bit easier to pronounce certain things thank you no problem we might also do a lesson on numbers as well if people want to really practice them so yeah no issues there uh, any other questions about the time? Not yet. We probably need to practice. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, hopefully at the end we'll do some practice with, um, you know, I would like to reserve a table at such and such time. So you might be able to practice your tricky uh, numbers at that point if you want. So if that's all, then we'll go on to meals. Okay, the different meals. So 
like in English, we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you also have what they call gute, which is to snack or to taste. Okay. If you're feeling a bit peckish, you might have like an apple or a biscuit or something. They call that gute. Okay. In the afternoon when the three o'clock munchies hit. So in the morning for breakfast, you have le petit déjeuner. Le petit déjeuner. Um, which means little lunch. Okay. Because to the French, the most important meal of the day is déjeuner. Okay. Lunch. Uh, they set aside two hours to eat lunch in France. So nobody works for two hours. Banks are closed, shops are closed, everything's closed except bistros, restaurants, and brasserie. Okay. <laughs> Shocked me the first time because I'm like, oh, I've got two hours to go to like the bank and do all kinds of things. Nope. <laughs> nope. It's all closed. All right. Post office, forget about it. Don't bother. Um, and then you have le dinner, okay? The dinner, very simple, very easy because it, at least dinner, sounds like dinner in, in English. So, yeah, it's just petit déjeuner, déjeuner, goûter, and dinner. All right? Those are the four. Now, menus are also a bit tricky in France because English took the word menu from French, but we use it to mean any menu, okay, in any restaurant, in any establishment. And it usually means a menu or la carte, okay? In France, if you ask for la carte or la carte, s'il vous plaît, they'll bring you a normal menu. Okay, the one where you can pick things, à la carte. Okay. However, if you ask for le menu, you are often at le restaurant. Okay, it is a set menu or a fixed menu. And you have no choice as to what you will get off that menu. It's just telling you what you're going to get. The same is la formule. La formule is usually like for lunchtime. If you're a worker and you go out to the bistro to get something to eat in that two hour period, um, it's like a set, smaller set dinner or a smaller set lunch of like maybe an entree and a main or a main and like a little like sweet thing, like a dessert, like a two part thing, but it's set for that price in that restaurant. Okay. It's usually a very popular one because it's like, I don't know, like nine euros for basically two meals. It's quite nice. Um, and yeah, so when you ask for, when, if you want the menu, the à la carte menu, you ask for la carte. Okay. Not le menu, different thing. Um, and then the menu is usually broken down into various different categories. You have Les entrées, entrées. You have les plats, main meals. You have les fromages, okay, cheeses. And you have les desserts, okay, desserts, sweets, whatever you, whatever you call them in English. So les desserts. And then you have les boissons, which are drinks. So that can be anything from coffee to wine. Okay, usually. Um, so yeah, what have we got? I might put that up there. So main. Okay. I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Apart from those two the main meals and the cheeses. So yeah, le fromage, okay. Le fromage, it means cheese. So les fromages, plural, article, L-E-S, means cheeses. All right. Any questions about those before we go on to vocab? 
No? Cool, 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 cool. Um, all right, moving on. Now, we're just going to go over a little bit of like drinks and food vocabulary so that when if you ever open up a menu in France and you're faced with French, um, usually you can ask for the English menu because they're very used to non-French speaking tourists coming. So they, you ask, oh, la carte anglaise, s'il te plaît, or s'il vous plaît. Okay, and they'll bring you the English menu. I'll write that down later. But in case you want to know how to read things on the French menu, we're just going to go through and pop them into these little squares. So this one here, does anybody have a guess? Le the first one. Le café. Le café or le café? Uh, le. le café. Okay, le café. What about us, our little teapot over here? Le. Le thé? Le thé. Yeah. So le thé. So it's basically tea, but that's how it's spelled. Le café et le thé. Okay, café, coffee and tea. Then you have, with our little orange over here. It's le orange. <coughs> Juste orange. Le orange. orange is correct for orange, but something goes before we get to orange. Jus? Jus, yeah. Jus. Le jus d'orange. Okay, or jus de pomme. Okay, so orange juice, apple juice. Okay, whatever follows, whatever kind of juice it is. Okay, um, will follow after uh, you've put le jus. Okay, or un jus. So, le jus d'orange, le jus de pomme, le jus d'ananas, so pineapple juice, le jus de, uh, de tomate, tomato juice, same principle, okay? Because in French, the adjective comes after the noun, okay? So, in English, we say things like the blue house, okay? But in French, they see la maison bleue, okay? The art, the Adjective, the describing word follows the thing. Uh, then we've got a little water bottle here. So how do we say water, guys? Low. Sorry? Low. Low. Very good. Yeah, this is one of my least favorite French words because I <laughs> struggled for a very long time to say this. <laughs> Such a long time. Um, until I saw a French meme in which a cat was going like, eh? and it said, this is how you pronounce water, lo, lo, okay? And then after that point, I was like, oh, okay, I've got it. <laughs> okay, another one is it sounds a little bit like low, like something is low. Not quite, but it, it helps if you think of it like that. So, lo, or de lo, of water, helps me to say it for some reason. So, l'eau, le jus d'orange, okay, or le jus. Then we have a little glass of wine over here. How do we say wine, guys? Vin. Yeah, so le vin. Le vin. Le vin. Le vin. And then beer. Any idea? I have no idea. No idea. So it's la, it's feminine, beer. La beer. Okay, same, oh. almost the same pronunciation. <laughs> okay. Okay, almost the same pronunciation in English. Okay, la beer. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then I've got a little hot chocolate. I know it doesn't look exactly like hot chocolate, but I didn't want it to look like the cafe on the top here. Chocolat chaud. Le chocolat chaud. Yeah. Le chocolat 
Sure. Okay. So we'll break it down. You've got chocolat, okay, chocolate, and chaud, which is hot. So the chocolate hot or hot chocolate. Because again, adjectives after nouns in French. Uh, and the last one, cocktail or a pre or aperitif. So you've got sort of two ways of saying it. You've got apéro. Okay, my little A is not there. Apéro or aperitif. Okay, apéro is usually what younger French say because it's a bit cooler. But you will hear people saying aperitif. Okay, on the menu usually. It'll say aperitifs or l'aperitif. Okay. So, le café, le thé, le jus, l'eau, le vent, la bière, le chocolat chaud, la apéro. Okay. Any questions or anybody want to know the name of something? For drinks, at least? No? Oh, with um, wine, you know how you've got white wine and red wine? Ah, yes. So colours. Okay. So you've got, um, you always start with the thing. So le vin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you wanted to say like red wine, mm -hmm. you'd say le vin rouge. So rouge being red in French, mm -hmm. so le vin rouge. Uh, white wine is le vin blanc. Okay. Like sauve blanc. Okay. Mm -hmm. So le vin blanc, le vin rouge, et rosé. Okay, we get that word from French. So rosé mm -hmm. is its own thing. They don't tend to say vin rosé. They just say le rosé. It's a bit of a different one. Okay. So le rosé as well. And then like on a menu, if they had like the red wine list and it was um, like Shiraz, Merlot, like, would they be like kind of spelled similar? Uh, yes. So most of, simply because of how French wine has become quite uh, global, mm. we use the French names for a lot of wines. So things like Savion Blanc, mm. uh, Cabernet Merlot, all the different names. Mm. You'll see them on the menu next to the to the wine. Mm -hmm. Only ones that tend to change are things like Shiraz. They usually call it Syrah. So Le Syrah, like this. Something like that. Because um, Shiraz is actually very Australian. I realised this when mm -hmm. I left. I didn't realise that it was not called Shiraz in most other places. So Le Syrah. Um, sometimes you'll hear it, Shiraz, because they're like, ooh, that sounds really exotic and different mm. but it's not very common um yeah, i'm just trying to remember if they called it anything else but no as far as i can remember syrah perhaps it's spelt differently sometimes with a y instead of an i like but yeah okay that's about it but yeah you will usually just see the name of the wine and also of le chateau or the house that made the wine oh, okay and people tend to like associate particular chateau with particular types of wine, like red wines, white wines, rosés, mm -hmm. ports, etc. Um, bourbon is also probably the spirit that you'll find mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I think so. Brandy, sorry, brandy is the one I'm thinking of. This tends to be the spirit there. Um, and yeah, that's about it though. Wine, they know all about it. So it's better to ask them what they, what the house rep like recommends. Mm -hmm. um, le vin de maison, okay, the wine of the house. Um, and they'll usually suggest either the red or the white. And then you'll like red or white, whichever one you prefer, and they'll just bring it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, guys? 
No? Okay. Well, we'll move along because we've got some food to get to now. So, this one down. Go. La nourriture, okay, or food, okay. You've got sort of six main categories. Again, like in English, some things cross over into different things, but uh, you've got la viande or meat. You've got les légumes, like vegetables, okay. Les poissons, fish and seafood, or fruits de la mer, so food of the sea. Uh, le produit, produit de lait, okay, milk products or dairy. Then you've got le cereal, breads, cereals, grains, etc. Le tissu. And uh, le fruit, okay, fruits. Um, might do what we did before and just start seeing if you have some vocabulary there. Uh, does anybody know our first meat? This little steak here. Le boeuf. Okay, le boeuf. It's actually where we get the word beef from. Okay, le boeuf. What about chicken? Anyone know chicken? Le poulet. Okay, le poulet, uh, which is not to be mistaken for the animal. Okay, uh, the animal is called le poule. Okay, for a female chicken, and le coq for a rooster. Okay, so poulet is only when you're eating it, when it's on the plate. I once said poulet when I was looking at a chicken, like a live one, and the French person just looked at me like, don't eat my chicken. Please don't eat my chicken. <laughs> so I, I learned that day not to mix the two. Um, then this last one is pork. Okay, le pork. Same thing, le pork, just with a K. All right. You also have things like lamb, l'agneau. All right. And yeah. If you, if you need any other translations, just let me know. Uh, what about our little uh, green thing over here? Our little lettuce. Any ideas? No. La salad. Okay, la salad. So all lettuces are salad. There's no difference between romaine Iceberg, nothing. It's all salad. Just call it salad. Um, then you've got les carottes. Okay. All right. And what about our little tomato here? Any ideas? I promise it's not a trick question. La tomate. Tom. Le tomate, yeah, le tomate, okay. Most um, Latin languages have similarities in vegetables for some reason, like carrots, tomatoes, even potatoes. In French, you have pomme de terre, which means potato, but you also have patate, so potato. Any questions there, guys? Or any foods you want to know? No? Okay, cool. Then you've got les poissons et le fruit de mer. So, les poissons literally means fish, okay? Then you have la crevette. Okay, crevette. And that means prawn or shrimp if you're American. All right, then you have over in our produit de lait, okay? You have milk, which is le lait, okay? Then you have le fromage, okay? 
Okay, we've seen this one before. Les fromages, okay, plural, and le fromage, okay, singular. Which one of these uh, items is feminine? Cheese. Not cheese. Oh, um, shrimp, prawn. Yes, tr shrimp is feminine. Anything else? La salade. La salade, that's right. Okay, and all the rest are? Masculine. Masculine. So you can see how the majority of words end up being masculine. Okay, it's good to err on the side of masculine if you don't know, because uh, the majority of them end up being that way. There's only, it's like the exception to the rule is that they're feminine, sort of. Okay, then we've got, do, 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 do. not those ones. Uh, we've got cereals or breads, I suppose. Okay. And we've got fruits. Okay. So everybody knows this one, this first bread stick. Uh, un baguette. baguette. Yeah. Un baguette. Okay. Say un baguette or une baguette? Oh. Un baguette. Yeah. Surprisingly, it's a masculine one even though it ends in the E double T. Usually that indicates it's feminine, but not this time, guys. Again, so exception, good. not the rule. So <laughs> and then you have our famous little crescent pastry underneath. Uh, un croissant. Again, un croissant, masculine. So les croissants. Okay, un croissant, les croissants. Okay. But again, if you if you say un croissant, it's just kind of like yes, they'll might giggle about it, but they're not going to make fun of you really. Like they're not because it's like oh, you're not a French speaker. I'd laugh at a French speaker if they said un croissant, but not like a tourist trying to speak in French because they really like it when you speak when you try to speak French. Uh, and then we'll kick across to our little apple. Les pommes. Les pommes. Yeah, exactly. Les pommes. Okay. Okay, les pommes. Et underneath. Pear. So just so everybody knows, it's a pear. So, les pois, okay, les pois, okay, so apples and pears, les pommes et les pois, okay, um, fun expression with les pommes, so the very poetic term for fainting in French is tomber sur les pommes, to fall on the apples. Okay, so uh, I had a student, French student that I was teaching English and she was, did creative writing piece and she directly wrote, uh, I fell on the apples and I didn't understand. I was like, what does this mean? And she explained, oh, you know, when you like, you know, you fall. And I'm like, yes. And she's like, and you, you, you lose consciousness. And I was like, oh, oh, like fainting. She's like, yes. And I'm like, Cool. We don't say that in, in English, but it's nice to know that there's an expression like that in French. So, tomber sur le pont, to fall on the apples. Any questions about those or any vocabulary you'd like to know? No? Okay, we'll move along swiftly. It's a little bit past three. If anybody has to go to class or do anything, but wants to have any answers for, sorry, wants to ask any questions, you can write them into the chat. Um, I'll post some answers onto the Facebook group. Um, if everybody knows where that is. Does everyone know where the Facebook group is? Yep. Cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, 
I'll keep going. I'm thinking it'll probably finish closer to sort of 3.20, given there's a little bit of grammar to go, if everybody's okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, great. So we've got sort of three tenses, okay, three grammar structures that we're going to go over today. We've got a conditional tense. There's a couple of conditionals. This is one of them, okay? Basically, would like to, okay? Voudrait. It uses the, um, the verb uh, vouloir, okay? Remember when we were talking about wanting, to want? So this is what happens when we use it in the conditional tense. So vouloir turns into voudrait. Okay, so just in case you were thinking, oh, I've not seen this word before, you have, just not in this form yet. Okay, so conditionals like I would like, so je voudrais, uh, let's say you wanted to reserve a table at a restaurant. Okay, you'd call them up or you'd walk into the restaurant earlier in the day and you'd be like, oh, you know, after, hello, my name is blah, blah. We'd say, je voudrais réserver en une table pour ce soir. Okay. Je voudrais réserver une table pour ce soir. Okay. I'll try and write that one down. Réserver okay ce soir so what could that mean ce soir in the evening yes so this evening okay ce means this in the masculine because the soir is masculine okay in this particular mm -hmm. sense um so reserver okay the, our verb our full verb because you can't have two verbs really in the same form in french you can have them conjugated and you can have them infinitive so you have je voudrais reserver une table pour ce soir i would like to reserve a table for tonight okay or for the evening all right. Mm -hmm. There's another way you can sort of ask about making a reservation. You can say, Je, or, tu voudrais faire un réservation. Okay. So I put it with two, but you can say, je voudrais faire un réservation. Okay, I would like to make a reservation. Okay, and usually, s'il vous plaît, because you're trying to be polite, always using those pleases and thank yous. So you've got two ways of basically doing it. Je voudrais réserver, un, oh, pardon. Je voudrais réserver une table pour ce soir. Et je voudrais faire un réservation. Okay, the two ways generally that they do it. Um, and those are basically how it repeats down the, the table. Il, elle, on, nous, vous, il, elle. Same structure because you're not changing the second verb. It just stays in the infinitive form. Okay, réserver or faire stays in that form. If you've already changed vouloir to voudrait or one of the other forms so in il elle on you have voudrait okay but it ends excuse me with a t and not an s you can also see in nu you've got the voudrions okay so the i o n s so the o n s is there it's just got an i on it because it's conditional You've got voudrais, okay, I, E, Z, okay, same thing with before with s'appeler, okay, same endings, and 
This is where it changes a bit. Okay. Voudrez. Voudrez. Okay. You've got voudrez. And basically, uh, this is the main change because it's conditional. You're no longer doing the ENT, it's A I E N T. It's just a funny one. Um, so just, I guess, note those down, just the voudrez ones, and note down that you have réserver and faire as your main verbs for making reservations. Okay. Uh, we'll move down. Any other questions with that? No? Okay. Come down then. So to order something or commander to command, you have two ways to do it, really. You can use the, uh, the vouloir, okay, voudrais, je voudrais quelque chose, I would like something, or je vais prendre, okay, to take. Does anybody remember this one? Maybe um, Jessica, do you remember prendre? Yes. Okay, so prendre means to take, okay? So they don't say all the time, I'd like to eat something. They tend to say, I'd like to take something. Just a linguistics thing. And it can apply to eating or drinking. Je voudrais, um, je, je veux prendre uh, une verre, okay, a glass of something. Or je vais prendre um, le boeuf, the beef. Okay, I'll take the beef or I'll eat the beef. Okay, so as you can see, it's a different tense. The vais, okay, je vais prendre, I will take, okay. It's a future tense, but also a present tense for eating and drinking, okay. Um, and then usually, I've put up there the way in which the sentences are structured. You've got the pronoun, voudrais, article, and object. So your article is like le, la, les. Okay. So le boeuf, la salade, la soup, etc. So je voudrais le salade. I would like the salad. Or non, uh, je vais prendre le boeuf. I'll take the beef. Okay. Those are the two ways to order. Um, and then the next one is called passé composé. Don't worry, we're not going to get through all of passé composé today because it takes a while to understand. But basically it is a past tense. It is a simple past tense that tells you that something happened in the past and has stopped. Okay, simple way would be like, I went to the park in English. You went there, you're no longer there. Okay. So we, you would probably use this after you've made the reservation and then you come back to the restaurant that evening and then the waiter might ask you, oh, do you have a reservation? And you're like, oui, j'ai un réservation. Okay. J'ai fait une réservation. Okay, so you have G apostrophe A, okay, it uses avoir. Does anybody remember the verb avoir? It means to have, okay? So it's an auxiliary verb. It's quite special because we use it for um, tenses, a bit like être to be, okay? So it's usually the one that changes for a tense. Um, and so for the different pronouns, you have different versions of what? You have a, 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 avant, ave, en. Okay? So, j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, on a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, 
elles ont. Okay. And then the verb passé or the past verb usually changes. Depends on each verb, regular verbs tend to end with a E in apostrophe, sorry, no. E with an accent, but fait, so faire, to make, okay, we saw that before, faire, to make, becomes fait. J'ai fait, j'ai fait une réservation. Okay. Ou j'ai réservé une table pour ce soir. Okay. So I reserved a table. Actually, that's a good one. So, réservé. Okay. J'ai réservé une table pour ce soir. Tu as, tu as réservé une table pour ce soir. Okay. So you reserved a table. I made a reservation. Okay. Difference is just in grammar, really. That's a hard one, but that's just so that you have it in your heads. Okay. For this tense. Um, we'll probably get to that once we've mastered a few more pronunciation things and a few more grammar structures. But passé composé is a good one to have because it's about the past. It's one of the first tenses about the past that's good to learn. Any questions about that one? No? Okay. Well, I'm gonna just put together the scenarios, okay, that we've covered today. We've got, first you have to make the reservation, okay? Um, are we going to make it for the evening? or for the morning? Morning or evening, guys? Evening. Evening, okay. So how do we say hello in the evening? Bon. Soir. <laughs> yeah. So, bonsoir, monsieur ou madame. Okay. Je voudrais un pour une personne. Un. Okay. What would I like to do? Reserver. Reserver, that's right. Yep. Reserver. Uh, un table. Une table pour, pour how many people would you like? Person means people. Random number. Trois. Trois personnes. Oui. Oh, huit personnes, trois personnes. <laughs> so three people. Okay. What time, guys? Um, uh, ah. Uh, 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 17. 17 heures. 17 heures. 17 Okay. And that's how you put it together. Okay. I would like to reserve a table. How many people? What time? That's the main gist. Okay. So, je voudrais réserver une table pour trois personnes à 17 heures. Anyone want to practice? Jessica? I'll oh, saying it? Yeah, if you want. Yeah, I'm just finishing writing. Okay. Um, je voudrais ou, uh, uh, réserver pour une table pour trois uh, is it personnes. Person, yeah. Uh, uh, 17 heures. 17 heures. 17 heures. So, je voudrais réserver une table pour trois personnes à 17 heures. Oh, okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. 
I had I had the word in the wrong spot. All good. All good. Anyone else want to try? Uh, I'll try. Anna, cool. Give it a go. Um, je voudrais réserver une table pour trois personnes à 17 heures. Good. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, really, that's good. Um, getting your your mouth around the sounds can be difficult. So it's it was good. Um, yeah, trois personnes, trois personnes à six sept dix sept heures. Dix sept heures. Dix sept heures. Okay. Shall we do another one? Yeah. Okay. What else could we say? We've done réservé. What was the other way? Mm, faire. Je voudrais faire un réservation. I'd like to make a reservation. Reservation. Yeah. Reservation. Je voudrais faire une réservation pour how many people? Combien de personnes? Uh, deux. Deux. Deux personnes. Cool. Uh, at what time? The 7 p.m. How to say 7 p.m.? Yes, no. Disneyf, okay, because it's twenty-four hour time. So seven o'clock in the evening. Disset, so disneyf. What the um? What's the um literal translation of that? Uh, so yeah. I would like yeah. to make a reservation for two people. At nineteen hours. Okay. Okay. So uh, the way my French professor sort of described it, she's like, "It's like we're all in the military." Yeah. <laughs> because they use twenty-four hour time, um, and she's like, "It's it's a shock to French people when they come to a place that doesn't use twenty-four hour time, because they get very confused when you say seven o'clock, because they're like morning." evening i'm very confused um and they miss they often miss the a.m and p.m that we say because in english we'll say seven o'clock a.m seven a.m or seven p.m but they're not listening to the a.m or p.m so they think seven a.m because you've said seven but in on the other end of the spectrum me trying to remember what seven o'clock at night is like disney affair when i'm really tired is really hard <laughs> so it's a bit tricky time but it gets easier because um yeah when you hear it over time yeah just remembering the numbers up to 24 basically okay uh and then yes i we did quand when so at disney uh, so we'll, miss, we'll skip that one. Did you finish it with civil play? Yeah, so I, I probably meant to do the civil play in that part. Okay. But yes, that's basically what that would be. Like civil play, okay? Remembering our manners, everyone. So you've got civil play. And what is the informal way? Um, to play. C'est play. Yeah. Not always. I'm still not sure why it sometimes changes between t, but I think it's because it's reflexive, like um, je m'appelle, rather than being je j'appelle, it's a it changes a bit, and like it's tu t'appelles, it's not tu tu pel. so I think it has something to do with that. It's a reflexive. Um, in saying that. Who would like to uh, have a go at say, introducing themselves? Like, quel est votre nom, s'il vous plaît? What is your name, please? Anyone? 
Je m'appelle Anna. Je m'appelle. And yeah, perfect. So, okay. Je m'appelle Anna. They'll write that down. And then, merci. Yes, merci. Uh, eh? What uh, would we say if we're seeing them tonight? Uh, Abiento. Yes, exactly. Yep. You can also say um, a tout à l'heure, depending on how soon the reservation is from the time you've made it. Okay, so maybe you did it at like, I don't know, what is that? That's five o'clock, nine o'clock, seven o'clock. So maybe it was five o'clock when you did the seven o'clock reservation. So you'd say, oh, a tout à l'heure, because it's only a couple of hours away. Mm -hmm. All right. But if it was the next day, you might say, oh, uh, a bientôt, see you soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions on those? It's all good. All right. Come down. So you're at the restaurant, okay? So bonsoir, m monsieur, madame, okay? Using our passé composé. J'ai. How do we put that? I made a reservation. Uh, J'ai fait. Fait un réservation for how many people? Trois. Trois personnes. At what time? Um, uh, this week. This week. But that's um. 1600. Did I get it right? That's uh, that's uh, 18. This week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 6 p.m. Yeah. So this week. Yeah. Okay. We'll say that. All right. J'ai fait une réservation pour trois personnes. Sorry, trois personnes. Okay. Trois personnes à 18 heures. Okay, three people at six o'clock. Okay, and then they'll say something like, Suivez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Follow me, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. And then, you know, la carte, s'il vous plaît. They'll give you one. They might ask you some questions. Avez-vous choisi? Vous avez choisi? Okay, have you chosen? Have you, you know? chosen what you wanted and you might go oui or no and if we oui, if yes what would you then say how do we command something how do we order something uh, va pro. Va pro. je vais prendre that's right uh, la salade la salade s'il vous plaît s'il vous plaît Okay, S SVP, s'il vous plaît. Oh, I did that the wrong way. Um, um, SVP is s'il vous plaît in like, you know, shorthand, texting. Okay, je, je vais prendre la salade, s'il vous plaît. Okay, how else might we say it? Using voudrais, perhaps. Je voudrais. Um, we'll do the same way. Yes, exactly. Je voudrais la salade, s'il vous plaît. Okay. I would like the salad, please. Je vais prendre la salade, s'il vous plaît. Okay. Same, same answer. 
Okay, and the same thing for drinks, you know. Je vais prendre un vin, s'il vous plaît. Okay. You might say une verre de vin, okay, or just vin rouge, okay. Un vin rouge, s'il vous plaît. Ou je vais prendre un vin, un vin rouge, s'il vous plaît. Okay. So same, same language, same. Did I just write that incorrectly? I did. Sorry, guys. We'll do that one again. V. Okay. Any questions about those guys? No. I Is that practicing? <laughs> yeah, it's all about practicing. Um, so, anybody want to practice? I could ask you, and then you can respond. Jessica? Um, wait, Avez vous choisi? Uh, oui, je vais prendre la salade, s'il vous plaît. Excellent. Um, Anna, avez-vous uh, choisi? Uh, je vais prendre la salade, s'il vous plaît. Excellent. Um, Lara? Oui, je vais prendre le, le carreau, s'il vous plaît. Ah. Le carotte, le carotte, okay, carrots, <laughs> lovely. So when usually uh, when we write about a vegetable, okay, we usually say les ou des carottes, okay, plurals, because um, we don't just want one carrot, we like several carrots or a bunch of carrots. Unless you, you just want one. Simple. If you carrot. just want one, then you say un carotte, s'il te plaît, or s'il vous plaît. <laughs> one, please. <laughs> A single carrot from the market, please. <laughs> un carotte de marché, s'il te plaît. <laughs> um, but yes, if you're at the restaurant, you might say, uh, je vais prendre des carottes, s'il te plaît. Okay, I'll take carrots, please. All right. Ou, uh, je vais prendre la soupe. OK, soup is la soupe. OK. Feminine. Um, le fromage bleu. OK. Blue cheese. Very popular for dessert, actually, in France. People tend to eat cheese rather than dessert more often than not. So they might say, Ah, avez-vous choisi un dessert, madame? Like, have you chosen dessert, madame? And you might say, Ah, oui, je vais prendre le fromage bleu, s'il te plaît. Ou s'il vous plaît. Okay? So I'll take the blue cheese, please. So, yeah. Um... What about uh, drinks? Uh, Jessica, qu'est-ce que vous buvez? Uh, je vais prendre un vin blanc, s'il vous plaît. Lovely, okay. And uh, Anna, qu'est-ce que vous buvez? Mm -hmm. uh, je vais prendre uh, la juice d'orange. Mm -hmm. okay. How to say a glass of juice? A glass of juice, say, so, une verre, okay, so, une verre is a glass, okay, de jus d'orange, okay, une verre de mm -hmm. jus d'orange, s'il vous plaît. Would you have to say that for wine as well? Um, usually they'll ask if you want bottle, a carafe, or a glass. 
Mm-hmm. So they, they might specify. So you usually have on a French menu three columns. I'm trying mm-hmm. to remember what they are. They go down. So columns uh, of pricing mm-hmm. and of size for wine. So you might have a glass, which is usually uh, <coughs> 25 CL, so 250 mils. You have a carafe, which is usually is that three, 37.5 CL, so 375 or a bit bigger. Oh, no, sorry, carafe is 75, sorry, seven, 750 mils. And then you have the bottle, so just a bottle of wine, which has a different price. Mm-hmm. And so you'll say, ah, uh, je vais prendre le, le savion blanc, s'il vous plaît. And then you <coughs> might go, une verre ou la bouteille? A glass or the bottle? Okay. Or, oh, en carafe. You might say, ah, oh, non, non, en carafe, like the 750, like the smaller one. So it might be between two people. So you don't just want the big bottle because it's lunchtime. Mm-hmm. So you'll do like a carafe so you can have maybe a cheeky glass and a half. Yeah. For the afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Otherwise, you can specify if you want. You can just say, Ah oui, je vais prendre un verre de le Savion Blanc, s'il vous plaît. Mm-hmm. Makes their job a little easier because they don't have to ask, but at the same time, they don't mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think that was about it. Was there any other questions about maybe foods or drinks you wanted to know? No, I'm all good. No, all good? Mm-hmm. Sorry? Oh, I just said I have to practice with what I have. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, sorry it's gone over time a lot <laughs> by a bit. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of content and it's possibly fried your brains, but, um, I do hope that you're enjoying it at least. Um, and yeah, if you do have any questions throughout the week, please don't hesitate to post them into the group or to send the Facebook <laughs> page a, a message. Um, cause we can either help you through there or through the, the group as well. Okay, cool. Well, enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. And um, I will see you next Monday. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's another one, actually. À la prochaine. So, to the next time. Okay. À la prochaine. À la prochaine. À la prochaine. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.